faith is belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who alone deserves to be praised and to be worshipped in the universe. And we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger after whom there is no more prophet or messenger to come. His family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the hour is established. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. One of the sad realities we live with these days is the high level of, of tension that many Muslim families live with. It is interesting to say the least that the very word Islam, which is the name of the religion or the system of life we subscribe to and we follow, means peace. Or at the very least, it has its origin from the root that means peace and security. And so it is ironic, but perhaps sad at the same time, that in our Muslim families, very often we don't find that peace and that security, or at least in some families. Now if this was few and far in between, it may not be a big deal, but I can tell you, brothers and sisters, it is not far and few in between. There is a quite high rate of this level of tension and infighting within, within the families, within Muslim families. And it seems like all the husband and wife can focus on are the negatives of each other. And so the husband would call his wife all of the worst names you can think about. And she also says all of the worst things you can about her husband. <coughs> but subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has taught us many realities. But he has taught us about two realities that I would like to share with you. That hopefully if we come to grips with these two realities, perhaps fa our families would find more peace at home, more comfort at home. That there will be less tension in the home. And there will be greater peace and security and happiness at home. And this, of course, will positively affect not only the husband and wife themselves, but also their children. Or perhaps more importantly, their children. Now, the first thing that Allah teaches us in regard to this issue that I would like to share with you, first reality is, Allah the Exalted teaches us that every human being has faults. No one is perfect. And, and the challenge we face as human beings is to actually accept others for who they are with their faults. Now I agree some faults might be uh, uh, things that can be corrected. There are certain things that we can correct. And there are certain, certain things that may not even be faults in the first place. It's just a different way of doing things. But Allah has taught us that each one of us, we have our faults. So that there is no human being who is without fault. But what Allah has taught us in the Quran is that we should not focus on the faults. Because although we all have faults, our faults are much less than the positives we have. So we have positives and we have negatives. But the positives are much greater than the negatives. And therefore, we should not focus on the negatives, but rather the positives. In other words, brothers and sisters, we should not look for reasons to fight with our spouse. 
And in my experience dealing with uh, counseling, counseling brothers and sisters, in particular husbands and wives, and sometimes even parents and children who have uh, fights or quarrels and so on, sometimes, and I have told them this, it seems sometimes that they are looking for faults in order to fight over them. It's almost as if they're looking to separate, to, to destroy their relationship and destroy their marriage. What Allah teaches us is not to try to destroy it, but try to make it stronger. How do you make it stronger? You have to stop focusing on the negatives and focus on the positives. As I said, there are certain things that maybe need to be changed. And certainly, these are things we should talk about. But there are certain things that may not need to be changed. It's just a different way of doing it. And one of the, perhaps, greatest challenges of any marriage is the ability to adapt, the ability to compromise, to give and take. We are all brothers and sisters as we are born and we are raised. We are accustomed to things in a certain way. In fact, we learn from our own parents how we should interact as adults with one another. And so when we get married, what we're bringing into the marriage is our own ideas of how the husband and wife should relate and interact with each other. We're bringing into the marriage our own way, our own uh, likes and dislikes, based on how we were brought up. And if we try to force that in our spouses, then you can see what's, what's going to happen here. You're going to try to sort of convert the other person to your way. But remember, that, that, that other person, whether it's the husband and wife, also was brought up in a certain way that he or she is accustomed to. And so no one way is better than the other. See, this is where the compromise comes in, or the, the adaptability comes in. One way is not necessarily better than the other way. And so the spouses must recognize that there, there are more than one ways of doing things. And the spouses have to be willing to try the other way, not just to hold on to their way and that's it. So the attitude that it is my way or the highway, as we say, will break any marriage. Anyone who has this sort of attitude, in fact, not just the marriage, but any relationship you enter with, even with your friends, if your attitude is my way or no way, then that's it. You're on your own. Now this concept of not focusing on the negatives, rather focusing on the positives, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights this in Surah An-Nisa. First of all, in this ayah, verse 19 in Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the husbands, وَعَاشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Live with your wives on terms that are fair, reasonable, and just. Then Allah says, فَإِنْ كَرِهْتُمُهُنَّ we're ordered first to be reasonable with our spouses. Reasonable, just, fair. This is what ma'roof means. Wa'ashiruhunna bil ma'roof. That is what Allah demands from us. Nothing more, nothing less. Be fair, be reasonable, be just with your spouse. But yet, in spite of this order to be fair with them, a person may still be tempted to focus on the negatives and to find faults. So Allah says, فَإِنْ كَرِهْتُمُهُنْ But in case you still dislike your wives or maybe some qualities in them, consider this. Allah says, فَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Consider that you may very well dislike someone through whom Allah will bring about much good for you. And the lesson that Allah teaches us here, brothers and sisters, is to rise above that, 
to be far-sighted rather than short-sighted. To be willing to overlook the faults or the things you don't like and be willing to give it a try, to make it work. Because at the end of the day, the very person you think you don't like and is not the right person for you, that is the person through whom Allah will, Allah will bring about much good for you. So this is the first thing, the first reality we have to understand and realize. That we're not perfect, we'll make mistakes, and we have to be able to accept each other <coughs> for who we are with our faults. Like I said, of course, there are certain things that can be changed. And those are things we should certainly talk about and work on. But the point is, the focus should be on the positives. And with the focus on the positives, inshallah, people are going to be able to make their relationships stronger and healthier. Now the other thing, the other reality we need to come to grips with and understand is that although we have to put effort into making the marriage work, we also should pray for our families, our spouses, our children. We should not just tell them what we expect from them and of them, but we should also pray and ask Allah to help them achieve what we expect from them. In this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, interestingly, in Surah Al-Furqan, as one of the qualities of His servants, Towards the end of Surah Al-Furqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Ibadur Rahman, the servants of the Beneficent One. And He lists the qualities that are expected from anyone who is a servant, a true servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the list is quite long actually. But the one quality of all these qualities that Allah mentions here that I would like to share with you is the one verse in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَانًا This is the last uh, uh, description in, these, in this list of, of, uh, of descriptions in this surah, Surah Al-Furqan وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا Allah teaches us among the qualities of His servants is that His servants pray رَبَّنَا our Lord هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْنَا Our Lord bestow upon us spouses مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا and our children قُرَّةَ أَعْنَا Make them the comfort of our eyes. The expression in Arabic means that you're happy when you look at it. It brings you peace and happiness and comfort. In other words, make our spouses and our children the source of comfort for us and peace and happiness for us. You see, brothers and sisters, Allah teaches us to pray for them well, very often what we do is we curse them. That's what we do. We curse them. But that's not going to help. Cursing them, calling them names, and mentioning and re recording all the, the bad things or the mistakes the person has made, this is not going to help anyone. The only thing it will end up doing, it will make the other person more angry, more upset, and the person will now reach the point where they're going to want to fight back. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us to is the way to achieve peace and comfort and happiness. By not simply saying kind words to the spouse, but by also praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make their, their spouses and their children good people. So instead of cursing them, we should pray for them. Instead of calling them bad names, perhaps we should try, brothers and sisters, calling them some nice names. 
So instead of a husband calling his wife, we know the B word is one of the most common ones, or calling her useless or whatever, piece of garbage, I don't know. Maybe if the husband says, Ya Habibati, my beloved, my dear, sweetheart, I know all these words we know, mashallah. Maybe if we try calling them nice names, we may find a very different interaction with them. And this is highlighted in a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, in which the Prophet ﷺ teaches us that it is unrealistic, unrealistic for a person to mistreat someone and still expect at the end of the day to have, to, to have that person be nice with them. This is unrealistic. If you ill treat anyone, that person is not going to treat you well at the end of the day. The Prophet ﷺ, and this hadith in particular, it speaks about the husband and the wife relationship. The Prophet says, alayhi salam, ayadribu ahadukum imra'atahu darb al-fahli thumma yujabu'aha min akhir al Does any one of you, or would any one of you, hit his wife, or beats his wife as he beats an animal, and then still expect to be intimate with her at the end of the day? Is this going to happen? It will not happen. So the husband, uh, Ill treats his wife. At the end of the day, he wants to be intimate and she's upset. She says no. So he gets upset and this whole thing escalates. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us the solution is to de escalate it. So pray for them instead of cursing them. Say kind words instead of harsh words. Kind words instead of harsh words. When the Prophet السلام, once a, a certain individual was mentioned and he told the people, he said, this person is a bad person, is an evil person. And interestingly, shortly after that, the same person came to visit him at his home in Medina. And the Prophet السلام, was very kind and very nice with the person. And Aisha radiallahu anha, this is a hadith in Sahih Muslim, by the way, she was sort of confused. And so she couldn't wait. As soon as the man left, the Prophet, she came to the Prophet السلام, and she said to him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, you told us this man was an evil man, yet you treated him so nicely. Right? She saw a contradiction between these two things, his treatment of the man and his words about the man. And the Prophet ﷺ said to her, Ya Aisha, Mata ahittini fahishan aw mutafahishan. O Aisha, whenever did you find me to be insultive and abusive? So even when the person whom the Prophet knew was bad and evil, and warned people about this, even in the presence of that person, the Prophet ﷺ displayed niceness, courtesy, common courtesy. And so instead of treating someone bad, we should try treating them well. Instead of calling them names, maybe we should use some nice words. Instead of cursing them, maybe we should pray for them. So let us, brothers and sisters, pray for our families. Yes, we tell them what we expect of them and what we don't want them to do. And after that, we should also make dua and ask Allah to bless them and to guide them to be what we hope they will insha'Allah become. So pray to Allah to make them the comfort of our eyes. As Allah tells us in this ayah, رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَاتِنَا قُرَّةَ عَيُنْ O Allah, grant us from our, our spouses and our offspring sources of comfort to our eyes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May he open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this beautiful message he has revealed for mankind and to enhance the life of human beings. And may he inspire all of us to live by this message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us firm on the straight path. And may he forgive for us our mistakes and shortcomings. And may he help us to improve the relationships we have with our own spouses and our own children. 
and may he help us so that their relationship with us can also be improved so that we all as a family will find peace and comfort and happiness.